right, continuing on in the Jeep series. So alternator is hooked up. I went ahead and made a few more minor adjustments here. I shimmed it a little bit more through here. You can see that belt is pretty good. It is pretty straight. We're in here nice and tight. Brackets looking good. Everything's tight on that. I went ahead and decided to just go ahead and reuse that existing old beat up cable that was here. The cable's still good. It was just the sheath that was all destroyed in it. So um, just for testing purposes, I needed to ground this alternator out. So I'm going to, I just basically took um, electrical tape and then wound it over the whole thing just to, you know, so we have a good grounding cable for now. And then we've grounded it out to the block. So what I'm going to do is I uh, go ahead and start wiring up all the, basically a test uh, wiring harness. So we're going to hook up, you know, the starter, the alternator, everything up, hook a battery up and then hook our key switch up that I purchased as well. Um, and then just want to crank over the engine, make sure the starter is functioning properly. Uh, we're going to hook some fuel up to it once we get everything wired up properly as well. And I want to test and make sure that this alternator is functioning properly. We should get, you know, anywhere from 13, high 13s, low 14s, um, amperage out of it, uh, or excuse me, voltage and all that stuff. And we measured on the, on the voltmeter. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and get that started. Uh, a couple things I did buy, 10 amp fuses. I'm gonna wire a 10 amp fuse into the wire that comes off the alternator, which is this wire right here. This plugs into the back of the alternator, runs to your voltmeter and your ignition switch. Um, and we'll go ahead and show you how that works as well once we get the wiring all set up on the key switch. Um, I just bought a basic inline fuse block to go in there. 10 amp fuses. I also bought a 100 amp fuse, uh, fusible link um, to go in line with the um, basically the wiring that goes from the battery to the alternator. I want to make sure that that has a fusible link on it so if anything surges we have a, a weak spot that we can go ahead and, and not destroy all of our components. So um, I'm going to get this wired up, and I will show you what it looks like once we have that done. Okay, so I've built uh, my fusible link. We've got our 12-volt wire that's bolted up to our starter. I took the oh, I took the jumper wire off the starter that goes on here because basically since I'm putting a key start in, I'm going to have to cut the end off of this wire. We're going to wire in a 12 volt wire that's going to go directly to the starter and the start of the battery. And this will go back on here and I'll show you how that looks when we're all done. Uh, but the fusible link is built. So we've got the side that's going to go to the back of the alternator. Um, we've got our fusible link in here. This side goes to the battery. So basically, um, just gives a spot for us to have like a fuse for the alternator in line. Um, it calls for a... Uh, six or an eight gauge wire. I don't have either of those available right here in the garage. I'm using a four gauge wire, which will only, um, basically they say six or an eight so that you don't use too small of a wire and then cause an overheating or a melting issue and then subsequently a short or a fire. So using a larger wire, definitely won't have to worry about that um, being an issue. So we're going to get this wired up and then we'll show you the next, next part. Okay, here we are. So I have not wired up the ignition uh, wire for the alternator yet first thing i want to do is i want to test the starter to make sure it's functioning correctly and that everything's going to mate up correctly between the bendix and the flywheel so what i did is again this is not the final wiring this is just a pure test wiring that i've hooked up to make her make sure that we can test everything um, final wiring harness is going is to end up replacing all this stuff uh, aside from these two big wires here so um i've zip tied the ignition switch over here to the wire because I don't have the dash and the Jeep to mate it up with right now. So I don't want to keep it from, I don't want these terminals to touch anything with metal. It'll cause a short, right? So I uh, just went ahead and zip tied it up here at the highest point where it's got access. Uh, it's secured up there. It won't fall. It won't touch anything uh, metal around it. So we're good on that. What I did here was per the instructions on this, you're going to want to run a wire from your battery positive side to the terminal. Now this starter comes with a jumper. Uh, from the factory that jumps the solenoid to the 12 volt, right? So it's designed so that if you don't want to use a key switch, you have that option. So what I did was I just pulled the jumper off the 12 volt on the stud, cut the end off of it, and wired a 
a 12 volt wire basically to the starter post on the key switch. I then ran a hot wire from the battery post on the key switch down to the battery right there. Fusible link again is only going to be for alternator if it has a short or, or a, a amperage spike or something like that this will die and not the battery and not uh, the other components. So uh, moment of truth right here. Let's see how she does. I'm going to try to set the camera up so y'all can see what we're doing. We'll put the key in there and give her a test start. Okay. Let's see how this works. Key in. Essentially, we should hear the starter turn over. Sounds great. It sounds exponentially better than the 24 volt starter that was in there. Um, I could tell, you know, if you look back at the other videos I did where I did a, a start on that, you can you can just hear how incredibly weak that 24 volt, you know, 50 plus year old starter is. It was just barely turning that engine over. Uh, this starter obviously is doing just a phenomenal job at cranking that engine over. Um, we got a full battery. It's been on charge. It's been on the uh, on the battery tender as well. So, um, and then here's my negative side. It just goes to the uh, the frame there. So, next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hook up all the components for us to test our alternator. We're gonna need to hook up a fuel tank to the carburetor, and um, hopefully she'll fire up. I'm probably going to have to save that for another video just because right now I'm not going to have time today to, to get that deep into it. Um, I had a little bit extra time, so I came out here and did this to test it. But um, I haven't fired the Jeep up for probably seven or so months. So I don't know. I'm assuming this carburetor is going to be good to go. I'm hoping so. I used ethanol-free gas in it before, so it should be. But um, anyways, uh, that's the latest update. Like, subscribe, comment, ask me any questions you have, um, and I'll update some more videos once we get to the portion of the alternator wiring, which I'm going to hopefully be able to do this coming Saturday. So, thanks for watching. All right, needless to say, I got impatient. So, here's our wiring that runs from our alternator. It's going to run up to our ignition side of the battery post, battery switch. This black wire right here. Runs down to the distributor, 12 volt on our, right there. All right, I'm gonna hook a gas can up to this thing and see if we can start. All right, she's running. Got a bolt meter on here real quick. It's 14 volts. Very solid. All right, so the alternator works. Running right at 180, a little over. Alternator or the uh, thermostat probably has not opened up yet completely. Well, it's pretty hot. Might need to add some more to that radiator, but yeah, it's running good. <laughs> 